Hello and welcome to the LCTV News. I'm Kyle Kabongo. In this edition of the LCTV News, Lens Senior Center Fuel Application, Union Hospital Campus Changes, Pink Angels 5K, Sit Down with Mayor McGee, and more. In about a week, Union Hospital Emergency Room will be closing its doors and all emergency services will be consolidated to North Shore Medical Center's Expanded Emergency Department at Salem Hospital. The Expanded Emergency Department in Salem will open on November 4th. The Expanded Department will provide convenient, efficient care for injuries such as cuts, coughs, infections, and sprains. The urgent care will be open from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. While the emergency room doors will be closing its doors, services such as Urgent Care Center, North Shore Physicians Group, Im Imaging Services, Infusion, Wellness, and Cardiac Pulmonary Rehab will remain in place at Union Hospital. The Lynn Economic Opportunity will be assisting low-income residents to, with their fuel application. The Fuel Assistance Program helps residents pay for winter heating bills, the program includes paying the rent for the heat that is included in the bill in the rent. The heating program runs from November until April of 2020. Eligibility for the fuel assistance program is determined by family size and household income. The program is also eligible for residents in Lynn, Linfield, Nahant, Saugus, Swampscott, and Wakefield. Also in an announcement, Lynn Economic Opportunity announced that they have received funding for the fuel assistance program through the Greater Lynn Senior Services Title III B grant, which will help with outreach to resident, to senior citizens. The first recreational marijuana shop in Lynn will be opening this Saturday on the Lynnway. Apatka, which opened its medical marijuana dispensary inside the Cooper Lewis building last November, the long-awaited opening on the Lynnway comes with some obstacles. Apatka received its recreational license after approval from the state's Cannabis Control Commission last Thursday. The shop will be open from 10 a.m. will be open at 10 a.m. and will include a ribbon cutting ceremony. The hours of operation for the shop will be from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. and will be open seven days a week. This week at City Hall, Lynn City employees participated in a pumpkin decorating contest. The decorations feature some of the most creative decorations from City of Lynn employees. Today is the last day for contestants to submit their decorations for residents who want to cast their vote. They need to visit City Hall and fill out the ballot. On Thursday, October 31st, Lynn Community Television will be receiving four awards at the Alliance for Community Media Northeast Region Awards Ceremony. The winning videos are the Boston Abolitionists, Training for Olympic Boxing, Lynn Uncovered Brian Pistols, and the 2018 Beyond Walls Mural Festival. Here are the, vi here are the winning videos. breaking at a pretty young age. I want to say I was around like 10 years old. And it all started with my cousin Johnson, really. One day he came over to the house and he was showing my two older brothers, Eddie and Tony, how to do a backspin. From there, Tony and Eddie kind of ran with it a lot more. They, they started before I did. And it was just kind of that sibling rivalry. When Eddie started high school, Tony and I were still in middle school at the time. He told us about a group of guys that he would practice with, that he met up with at the high school, which was classical. And those guys were the bicha breakers. After school, me and Tony would go over down the street to classical and we would go practice with them. And, you know, eventually we became a part of the group. I think it pretty quickly turned much more into a family. There was a bunch of different places in Lynn that we used to practice at all the time, you know. One spot that comes to mind right away is Club America, which is we're right in front of now. It's a, it's a church now. Rest in peace to Frank. He, he He's done a lot for us to just give us a space to practice our craft. The Boys and Girls Club, which was 
a program that got started for us by Mark Feldman, who was a teacher in the Lynn Public School System. Here and there, you know, there would be practices in the classical cafeteria, practices at Lynn English and Lynn Tech have like open basketball courts and we used to just go and grab a corner and go practice there. Growing up in Lynn as a b-boy, you know, there's a lot of different stages to it. So obviously when, when we first started off and my older brother Tony and I first started practicing with the rest of the Bychop Breakers, you know, we were very naive to the whole game. We were young, this was new, we had no idea what it was. So for us it was just like, it was just something to do. It's part of a much bigger picture. Breaking is a part of hip hop, and as you dig deeper into that, you get to a bit more of a sophisticated level with it. You're learning more of the cultural parts of the dance, you know, of, of hip hop, really. We learned the history that Lynn has with breaking, and Lynn has a very rich breaking history. At that time, I was completely naive, too. I think one of the biggest influences to me when I started off in terms of, you know, bridging that gap was uh, at that time he went by the name of Red. He does a lot of work in Lynn now, he goes by the name of Justice Bourne. So he would play a pivotal role in kind of filling us in on the larger context of what we're doing. I mean, because for a long time prior to that, it was the blind leading the blind. And then obviously he was very well equipped and knowledgeable in terms of the overall community in Lynn, in terms of break, not just in Lynn, but Massachusetts, like the East Coast and Northeast and such. And then we come to learn that, you know, one of the more reputable crews from back in the day is actually from Lynn as well. They're called the Lords of Illusion. To kind of learn their history and learn the stories of what they've done and how they were the ones that put Lynn on the map. Growing up in Lynn in the early 90s and such, like, there was a lot of, I guess we'll just call it negativity. This was a way for you to take all that energy you had built up whether it was frustration, whether it was pure joy, no matter what it was, you could, you know, let it go through your dancing. But at the same time, it wasn't just letting go of things, it was creating things as well as a dancer. You know, creating your own original freezes, creating your own little maneuvers and movements within your dance, really tailoring the dance to yourself. Coming up the way that we came up, it's like we didn't really have anything to have those original components of your dance, that, that was almost like your currency. I'm not myself if I haven't gotten a certain amount of dancing done in my week. Too long without it, it almost feels like, you know, you've taken the tree away from its roots. Definitely in way too deep now. <laughs>Charles Espinal, I'm 23, I'm from Salem, Mass, and I train here in Lynn at a private Jewels Fitness. Uh, a little bit about my boxing background is uh, I've been boxing for nine years. I've trained in gyms like uh, West End Gym in Lowell out of Mickey Ward. I've trained out of Haverhill, I've trained out of Peabody. Hi, um, my name is Daniel Marte, and um, I go to Kip, and I'm 12 years old, and I'm a boxer at private Jewels Fitness. What? What it made me learn was discipline and hard work. I just keep on hard, um, working hard and stuff and just like trying to get motivated and stuff. What coaches say to me is like, oh, keep on going, you got this, you got this. And then like they motivate me to keep on trying harder. So like if I'm tired, they like more, um, like talk to me like, oh, you can be, um, you can, you can win, you can do it. And then just not, to not give up.
you know, the kids are the ones that need to get to their next level. So our jobs as coaches is to facilitate them to get there. You know, the safety, you know, making sure that their dreams are getting met because, you know, the kid could work hard, but he's also a coach. I have to work hard along with them. Because if a kid is going 100 miles per hour, a coach better be going 150. Um, yeah, getting these kids, you know, prepared for the Olympics, um, you know, obviously we're stepping it up a notch. Um, but, you know, our, our motto is right there on the beam. Um, it's, um, you know, you train, you know, you train, you fight, and you win. So to me, um, you know, the real work is, 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 and the fight is always won inside the gym, day in and day out. The kid could go as much as the club could go. So, you know, you have to just give it 100% with these kids along with them. Show them that you care, show them that their progress means something, not just for themselves, but for their future and everybody around, because they're just becoming role models. One thing is um, that I can use them both is self-defense, and another is my goal in boxing is to like become a champ like, like Mayweather and like Muhammad Ali and stuff. And for us to train and trying to get into the Olympics and have that chance is just, it's awesome. And I love fighting in the national explosion. I love the, the, the thought of representing this part of Massachusetts. Well, the beautiful thing is the diversity. That's one thing that why I love my city, a great city of land, because of the great diversity that we have in boxing. It's huge diversity. We got people that they fighting from Mexico, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Ireland, Canada. I'm so grateful that Alex and uh, you know was able to, to give me his facility and, and allow me to, to grow in the sport of boxing. Um, how it came to, I, I won the Golden Boy Championship, and then after that, I started seeing you know these kids coming into the gym that. You know, um, basically, were coming in through the same situation that I was. Um, you know, they didn't have a lot of guidance. They were coming on, coming in off of the street. So um, it was, it was a privilege for me to be able to take these kids um, and hone their skills, help them to hone their skills, and you know, become great fighters. Um, and obviously, you know, get them off the street, get them out of these gangs, get, you know, make them, uh, you know, give them something to do that was productive and that could build their self-esteem, so that they could have an outlet to, um, to use. It's not the problem is when they're in the gym, it's when they leave the gym. Uh, you know, the outside struggles, you know, the energy out there, negative energy that are always tempting these kids to just, you know, get off their the way to reach their goals. But these kids still come here after all the problems that they're going to say, hey, and just give it 100%. But it's all about how bad you want it. And the, well, the, the more you want it, the harder you're willing to work. And we work really hard in this gym, especially with this heat. Push yourself, you know, and, and, and trust the process because it's not going to be easy. You know, at the end of the day, it, it, it's just a relationship that all the coaches here, it's not just me because it's legit, this is a family. It's not just me and I'm not going to take all the glory for myself. It's my staff, my team, especially my team, my coaches, kids helping each other here. You know, they just, we work together, combine this one that is just worth like peanut butter and jelly. This is all for great sports for one cause, you know, so everybody to get there, we all need to work together. Teamwork, we made the dream work. That's how we do it. Beyond Walls is a creative placemaking agency headquartered in Lynn, Massachusetts. Our mission is to activate space to strengthen community. We wanted to start the project based on feedback from community meetings that were led by Mass Development. And out of those meetings with residents and business owners, there was really a focus for a need for lighting and more artwork in downtown Lynn. From that stemmed everything that we've done, the underpass lighting, the installation of the vintage neon, and now two years of mural festivals. So all of our walls were prepped by the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades Union. DC35 is the chapter that worked with us. Really, they were a partner. Last year, we came in and made a commitment 
to do all the prep and priming of all of the walls for the muralist. So this year, our business manager, Jeff Sullivan, uh, understood the commitment to the community. So we've been out here for the last week and a half, power washing and prepping all of the walls for the murals, and then we put masonry primer on all the walls. Uh, Sharon Williams donated all the paint for us. We have a rotating staff of about 10 members coming out and volunteering their time. So last Saturday we had our Women in Action Committee, uh, which was six women from our union. Two of them were Lynn residents, donated their time, and they primed all of the walls at the 451 Broad Street project, which will be done by a woman artist, uh, Sophia from Puerto Rico. And we're really happy about the uh, commitment of the women in the trades and, and the commitment of the women artists to come out and help beautif beautify Lynn. They also got us all uh, live certified. So all of our artists and their assistants were trained and certified in lift operation, meaning that everyone was much safer. And that was all on DC 35. There were really two main components of this year's mural festival. Again, large scale pieces of artwork that were installed by artists reflected the cultural identities here in Lynn, as well as the restoration of two what we've termed ghost signs. So these are signs that date back to as early as the 1930s. They're painted on brick advertisements and we converted the Zimmons one back to the look and aesthetic that it was in when it was first installed, as well as the Empire sign that can be seen from the commuter rail. So we had artists from all around the world. Uh, we had 24 artists here in Lynn. On this week's Community Connector, we went to Lynn Woods for the Pink Angels 5K Run and Walk. Here is this week's Community Connector. Today is the fifth annual Pink Angels Road Race Run Walk uh, to benefit the Pink Angels Inc., which is a local Lynn organization. We were part of uh, a group of walkers who did the breast cancer three-day walk in Boston, which is a 60-mile walk over a course of three days. The walk, our, our team in Boston can grew every year, and in 2013, the Boston uh, three-day walk ended and what happened with our team is we decided to go forward and create our own nonprofit organization to continue that process of raising money to fight breast cancer for research. So I just know too many people who are personally affected and I wanted to step up and do something so I joined the Pink Angels um, as a three-day walker and then when the three-day ended in Boston and the Pink Angels were starting to do this race I wanted to contribute in some way. Um, for me that was helping plan the route, mark the route and just getting involved with this race. It's a great opportunity to get people into the woods. Um, I love running in the woods, so to be able to share that with other people as well is a great opportunity. When our nonprofit organization was created in 2013, we are still funding, we're still raising money, and all of the money is staying local. A lot of it is for um, Lynn Community Health Center was one of our beneficiaries. We've, we've, uh, now what we do is we have a grocery gift card program that we're uh, outsourcing to all of the local cancer centers for patients going through treatment. We also donate, we have a fund that we created at Dana-Farber for young women with breast cancer. It's important for everybody to just know to have that awareness of you know what organizations are out there what their own personal risks are what they can do to mitigate some of those risks and I think it's a great local organization to help bring awareness to the community. 
you know, after doing the Boston event, and we, you know, we all just became really lifelong friends, and we wanted to continue that, you know, that program of raising money. Trying, you know, basically, we're trying to find a cure. We're trying to help raise money to um, service people as as we go along, but also the ultimate is to live in a world without breast cancer. That's really our goal. It gets people out, it gets people active, and I think that's a really important piece. Um, personally, it's a great way, any little bit that you can do to bring some awareness and fitness opportunity to people, I think is a good, it's a good thing, and I'm happy to be part of it. Now for the sports update. The Lynn English Bulldogs boys soccer team have clinched the Northeast Conference title for the first time since 1983 after a successful week of play. The Bulldogs in their three games this week went 2-0-1. The two wins came against Salem and Winthrop, and they had a draw with Lynn Classical on Monday at Manny Field. Their 3-0 victory was the NEC clincher. Their 3-0 victory over Salem was the NEC clincher. Three Bulldogs scored a goal in the win over Salem. English would follow that up with a 5-0 victory over Winthrop last night at Manning Field. Chris Lazo led the way for the Bulldogs with three goals. Kelly Nwanchuku and Yonel Espinoza each had a goal for the, in the shutout. The Bulldogs traveled to Saugus on Monday for their season finale. Lynn Tech boys soccer team have clinched a spot in the Division IV state tournament after their 5-1 victory over Greater Lowell on Thursday. The Tigers got two goals each from Brian Barrera and Alexis Narios, and Giovanni Solis added a goal for the Tigers. Next up for the Tigers is a matchup with Northeast on Tuesday, then they finish their season Thursday at Essex Tech. Lynn Tech Tigers football team continued their winning their hot streak on the gridiron as they defeated Georgetown 27-7 at Manning Field on Saturday, last Saturday. The Tigers running attack was too much for Georgetown to handle. Running back Haydar Boudouari had 107 yards on the ground to go along with three touchdowns. Gabriel Perez also added 70 yards and a touchdown. Tech got going on their second drive of the game as they established their running attack. Wadwari, Perez, and Luis Pinero all rushed the ball to march down the field and capped off the drive with a Wadwari rushing touchdown. Wadwari would re add another 10-yard touchdown rush right before the half to extend the lead to 13-0. Georgetown will cut the lead to 13-7 after Matt Gailey scored on a 75-yard touchdown rush, but Georgetown would get no closer than that. Tech, now 5-1, will take on Northeast Regional on Saturday. Lynn Classical Rams are one step closer to clinching a playoff spot after their 58-6 victory over Gloucester Saturday at Newell Stadium. The Fishermen had no answer for the Rams' offensive attack. Receivers Jeffrey Hill hauled in three touchdown passes to go along with his 145 yards receiving. Brandon Summers was also added 100 yards receiving as he went for 117 yards on seven receptions and added two touchdown receptions. Quarterback Dan Gisono threw for 272 yards and completed 16 of 21 passes. Classical will take on Saugus tomorrow. If Classical wins, they boost their chances of clinching a playoff berth. The St. Mary Spartans got their third shutout of the season this past Saturday at Manning Field as they shut out Central, Catholic Central League rival Arlington. 8-0. With the victory, the Spartans are now 4-2 on the season and have clinched a spot in the state tournament. Quarterback Derek O'Leary had 80 rushing yards on the day and scored the only touchdown of the game, which came on their opening drive. The Spartan will take on Mashby tonight at 6 p.m. Lynn, and Lynn English Bulldogs offense had an offensive explosion at Stackpole Field against Saugus last Friday. Bulldogs quarterback Matthias Fowler and Jesse Maggs each had great outings as the Bulldogs used both quarterbacks in a back-and-forth effort. Fowler threw for 118 yards and also threw two, two touchdowns, while Maggs threw for 148 yards and a touchdown. Fowler also had an all-around effort as he caught a touchdown pass and had an interception on defense. English also got a big game from receiver Taj Perter, 
who hauled in two touchdowns and rushed for a touchdown. Prior to finish the day with 124 receiving yards, the Bulldogs take on Winthrop tonight at Manning Field. On Thursday night football, the Minnesota Vikings won their fourth straight game as they defeated the Washington Redskins 19-9 in Minnesota. Quarterback Kirk Cousins had another strong outing as he went 23 for 30, 23 for 26 for 285 yards, and receiver Stefan Diggs caught seven passes for 143 yards. The Vikings ground attack garnered 161 yards. Dalvin Cook, league, leading, league leader in rushing, had 98 yards and a touchdown, while Alexander Madison added 61 yards on the ground. Minnesota's defense did not allow a touchdown and forced two turnovers while sacking the, Vi while sacking the Redskins quarterbacks four times. The Vikings traveled to Arrowhead Stadium on November 3rd to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. The Boston Celtics dropped their season opener to the Philadelphia 76ers 107-93 to Wednesday night in Philadelphia. The Celtics were led by Gordon Hayward, who had 25 points and 5 rebounds. Jason Tatum added a double-double with 21 points and 10 rebounds. Kemba Walker struggled in his first game in the Celtics uniform as he went 4-for-18 4 from the field to go along with his 12 points. The Celtics struggled from the free throw line as they shot 58% from the free throw line throughout the game and 26% from the three-point line. Celtics will look to get their first win of the season tonight as they take on the defending NBA champs Toronto Raptors at TD Garden. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, we sat down with City of Lynn Mayor Thomas McGee. Here is this week's Lowdown. Welcome to the Lynn Lowdown. I'm your host, Mikhail Kabongo. Today, we have a very special guest. Took time out of his very, very busy day to come speak with us. Mayor McGee, how you doing, sir? Great. Glad to be here tonight. Thank, thank you. God, thank, thank you for coming. Thank, Glad thank to you be for here. coming. We've been working on this for a while. Um, you know, how's everything going with you? Things are good. Yeah. Things are good. All right. So, yeah. you know, you've, uh, it's, what you coming on, two years now? It'll be two years in January. Yeah, two years so in it's, January. Uh, uh, it's gone by quickly. Yeah, just talk a lot about. Go, a lot going on. Yeah, definitely. Talk about just when you first got in, some of the differences, just in responsibilities from being a mayor and from when you were a state senator. I think the, starting the job the first, the first few weeks, uh, realizing that uh, everything's up up front and uh, comes at you quickly. Uh, you know, issues, we, I was in a couple of days and we had a major storm with major flooding in West Lynn and yeah. so uh, it didn't take long to realize that uh, issues jump in front of you a lot quicker than uh, sometimes you anticipate and it's a little, a lot different than the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's issues of importance that are really can be intense in the debate and the discussion but you, had a ch yeah. you have a chance to uh, work on it, build consensus, uh, work with the colleagues in the Senate uh, to file and pass legislation yeah. of importance to the community and, and working on things that impacted the, the, the district that I represented. Yeah. Being mayor, um, you're in it every day, 24-7, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, the issues you're working on when you get in at uh, uh, 8, 8.30 in the morning change by 10 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, uh, last week we had a... Um, uh, crazy storm yeah. blow through that was not anticipated, mm -hmm. so uh, really impacted the community. So those are the kind of things that you need to be prepared for and ensure that you're working with uh, all of the people in the city to address those issues that you know, when you wake up you're not you know you're not <laughs> thinking about and, and then they are right in front of you. Yeah, definitely. And when, and when you came on board, so one of the issues that you had to work on and uh, address with the with the city and you know with everybody to work together on was the city finances. That was something you had to tackle on and work on bringing just leveling the the city finance because in the past two years we have there was borrowed money in the past two years and you were trying to balance balance it out and so far it's it's going you guys is it going in the right direction that yes. you wanted it to be it's uh, we're making progress uh, i walked in there was a nine and a half million dollar deficit uh so not only did i see a major storm in the first couple of days we had uh, nine and a half million dollars that we had to find mm -hmm. uh, and working with the city council um, who was very supportive uh, the legislative delegation we filed legislation that allowed the city to borrow money mm -hmm. up to 14 million dollars to help us use that money for our operating expenses which 
expenses, which typically you wouldn't want to be borrowing money for operating yeah. expenses. But we were really in a tough place, and uh, again, working with the legislature and with the governor's uh, support, the administration and the city yeah. council, we passed that legislation and were able to borrow the money and balance the budget for 2018, which yeah. is the fin fiscal year. Going into FY19, we had made progress, but we were still really behind the eight ball, and yeah. we were able to find, um, again, borrow four and a half million dollars in FY19. Mm -hmm. Working with uh, the unions on the health insurance uh, yeah. through a really collaborative effort, we were able to uh, come to common ground to find some savings and still prefer yeah. to preserve the benefits. That was and the fiscal year 2020 That's 2020, insurance. which we're currently in, fiscal year 2020. Yeah. The fiscal year starts every July 1, so yeah. it's, uh, even though we're in 19, it's, it, it goes uh, as of July one it's fiscal 2020 yeah. and so again uh, in a collaborative way working with uh, uh, with all of the employees and the unions we're able to come to a um, common ground and find an agreement that uh, yeah. allowed us to save some money and and continue to preserve the benefits we do have a balanced budget in yeah. 2020 uh, but we still have a long way to go we have limited um, resources for uh, reserve funds. Mm -hmm. We're starting to build those up, uh, build more money into our snow and ice reserve yeah. and other places. So uh, we've made progress, but we're still um we still are, are ways to go to get, you know, as, as we like to joke about, uh, uh, we were drowning when I came in. Yeah. Now we're treading water, our head's above water, but we still need uh, we still need to be vigilant and work together to yeah. ensure that we're moving the city in the right direction. Yeah, and w with the financial the financial circumstances, the financial issues, it also ties into kind of the school department and the, because there was a vote for, no, a no vote for this for new school buildings, and you guys are trying to work something out with that because the issues in the school right now is the overcrowding, and that's something that the school committee, as well as you guys in the city city council, was trying to trying to figure out how to alleviate that. Well, there's two issues related to the school, and and again, it's uh, financial the financial issues that mm -hmm. face the city. Uh, but with the legislature very close to finalizing a, um, a funding formula that we that I worked for in the legislature legislature to change the funding formula and the commission indicated that Lynn needed substantial investment. Mm -hmm. The House and Senate have come to a very, uh, to an agreement that will allow us to get get the money. We were probably being underfunded by $47 million a year. We had an additional boost in money this year, which has allowed us to hire new employees uh, that filled the need for the community, for the for the schools in our community. Uh, so with that legislation finally passing, we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of building schools, the, the, the vote is, uh, determined that the uh, proposal two and a half years ago was not uh, did not accept it. Mm -hmm. uh, majority, I mean, 66 percent of the community voted against um, that investment at that point. Yeah. Uh, so what? And it's really linked to our financial situation. So, as we get uh, continue to make progress on um, establishing a stable financial uh, ground for the city, it's building capacity to start to take a look at how do we start to address the schools that need to be mm -hmm. uh, that we need to build. There's ten schools over 100 years old. Uh, the city. Uh, it's so, so important for our city to take a look at it how we can get those schools built, build a consensus in our community, yeah. recognizing the value and the importance of building new schools. Mm -hmm. So we're working together to, to, to navigate those those uh, challenges as we move forward. Speaking of build, buildings and development and stuff, there's currently on the waterfront, there, there's a development going on over there. We've got development happening on Monroe Street, mm -hmm. seems like a lot of development happening in the, in the city of Lynn. Can you, just, can you talk about the, the waterfront project that's happening right now? The waterfront on projects probably been 30 plus years in uh, in in planning stages mm -hmm. through different uh, proposals that have happened over the years. So we were able to get state money uh, to uh, to do work on the uh, the seawall, the revetment on uh, the North Harbor site. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got Mass Works dollars have come in to help us actually um, several million dollars to work on the infrastructure needed to enter that property. But there's a number of pa the, that's exciting that's, yep. that that's happening. Uh, but I think just as important is the open space master plan that's connected to our waterfront master plan mm -hmm. that will create 60 acres of open space for everybody in our community to access and enjoy. I mean, when you think about uh, what we have on our waterfront, it's been an un, uh, 
untapped resource for so long, and mm -hmm. it's been really um, walled off to our community. Yeah. So as we look to development and the right development, uh, uh, as we develop zoning and other uh, plans as part of the ongoing master plan process, uh, I think the really exciting piece of that as well is that the open space that we're creating down there, we'll be have uh, open space parkland, 60 acres, there'll be parkland, boardwalks, and a real connection from the uh, General Edwards Bridge mm -hmm. uh, almost all the way to the beach, which is what we've envisioned in the past. Yeah. And on another positive note, you talk, you were t we were just talking about this, crime and violence in the city, uh, reduction, and you said you said that somewhere around 30% decrease over the past uh, year? Uh, I was with the chief last night, he spoke at a um, um, Lynn Democratic City Committee meeting last night, it was just one of the featured speakers. Uh, the reduction in crime over the last year, uh, and he, he, put, he also indicated a 30% reduction in violent crime since last year. Um, obviously, this, um, we want to continue to make the community safe, but we are going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. That reflects a trend in terms of uh, reduction in crime over the last two or three years. And just as important is, is uh, filling in uh, police positions that were um, understaffed for a number of years. Mm -hmm. That's been one of my top priorities. And, and again, working with the council, we've been able to um, add uh, 10 in last year's budget. Okay. We got, there was nine police officers through a grant. We had a 10 in the 2019 budget, and we just, with the council, approved another 10 police officers uh, as an amendment to this year's budget. Uh, working with the chief, we're filling those positions, and there's, uh, we have reserved 26 uh, s slots available for the police academy in January. So we're, we're anticipating that we'll be adding 26 uh, new uh, officers through the uh, the academy, and we're hoping by the end of uh, middle or end of next summer that we'll have gotten this, the police force up to a level where it was a number of years ago. So we're making making progress on that end as well. Okay, and, and lastly, before you go, can you just uh, give us a quick, quick update with the parking in the city, the downtown parking, and also the Buffing Street parking lot? What, what are the plans for those? So, so we're in a process of doing a, a traffic study and a parking study for the for the whole downtown to see what we have for parking, uh, what what the needs are, and what the uh, opportunities are. And there's been discussions about we have three city-owned parking lots, so we've uh, we put an RFI out, which is a request for information about should we look at uh, one or three, mm -hmm. there's three city-owned lots. Should we look at those lots for potential for uh, for development and, and creating opportunities in the downtown? So we, we got some information in on that and we'll be working with the public pro process to determine whether or not that makes sense, what okay. the parking needs are, and if we do uh, pick one of those uh, locations, um, either Buffum, Buffum Street, uh, Andrew Street, or School Street, and, and from my perspective, School Street is is a big lot. It's, yeah. it's in the central location, very close, uh, probably the closest to the community rail station, can we create something there that preserves parking that we need mm -hmm. and then creates uh, the kind of development we're looking for in our community and, and so there's opportunities there. So we're looking at these these kind of options to see yes. what, what would be the, the right direction to go yep. and, and we'll be putting together the parameters on a request for proposal once we decide on how we should move forward on that. But that, again, we're, we're continuing to get input from um, the council, members of the community to, to determine what the right direction is uh, related to those three parking lots. All right, all right. There's, uh, there's a lot happening in the city. There's a lot, a lot happening. A lot, a lot of development happening. Well, we got through most of it. Yeah, <laughs> we got we, well, 90, we, 90 yeah, of it. Yeah, well, we've got, we didn't get to transportation. Yeah. I'm happy to come back and talk about yeah. that. Some great things going on with transportation yeah. and some plans we're working on together with the delegation. To, to try and uh, uh, see the kind of transportation access in our community that would really add value to the city of Lynn. All right, definitely. All right, we are out of time. I mean, Mel McGee will come back and give us more information, yeah. but thank you for coming. Thank Glad you for uh, taking the time yeah, out of thanks. your day. You guys have been watching the Lynn Lowdown. Have a great day. Upcoming local events. Tonight from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m., the Salvation Army Harvest Festival will be taking place on Franklin Street. The event is open to everyone. Costumes are welcome. On Saturday at the Lynn Museum, Arts After Hours will premiere the Rocky Horror Picture Show. The live show will go on from 6.30 until 10.30. There will be an onstage VIP after party which begins at 9.30. On Sunday, October 27th, the 38th annual Walk for My Brother's Table will be happening at the Church of the Holy Name in Swampscott. 
registration begins at 1 p.m. and the walk will begin at 1.30 p.m. All proceeds for the walk will go towards helping my brother's table serve meals to the community. On Wednesday, October 30th, the Food Project's mobile market will go on from 1 p.m. until 2.30 p.m. at Ingalls Elementary School. This will be the last mobile market of the fall. The new Lynn Coalition will be holding its election forum at the Lynn Museum from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. on Wednesday. Topics for the forum will include housing, safety, jobs, representation, and community benefits. LCTV's next Paramount film series will take place on Monday, November 11th. The movie choice for November will be Shaun of the Dead. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Movie begins at 7 p.m. Free popcorn and beverages will be available. Thank you for watching the LCTV News. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit us at lintv.org to watch any show anytime on your computer, tablet, or phone. I'm Mukala Kabongo. Have a great day and happy Halloween.